Hi students, so this week for our last lecture, it's going to be about our lab exercise, which is exercise H. Uh, so the point of this is to remind you of some skills you should have learned in your algebra class and apply them a little bit to what we will be learning in chemistry. There's going to be chemistry material in here, but you won't need to know what it means yet to be able to graph the numbers. Uh, so this will give you an indication of how we do this in science, though. It, there, is some, there are some differences. Uh, from your math class, but not too many. I'll talk about what they are. So here, for example, we have a graph. Uh, it has some units and measurements you might not be familiar with yet. For example, temperature here, which is in degrees Celsius. Uh, you probably are familiar with temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so, you know, you might not be familiar with Celsius. That's okay. You can still read the numbers here and read the graph. Uh, it has a, a, a measurement called vapor pressure, which is in torr. The torr is a unit for measuring pressure, kind of like when you measure your car tire pressure, you measure it in pounds per square inch or PSI. Torr is another way of measuring pressure in that way. And vapor pressure is the pressure due to gases that are coming off a liquid in a closed container. We'll talk more about that uh, later on. And we have vapor pressure for a variety of substances, ethyl chloride, ethyl ether, ethyl alcohol, water. You don't need to know what these are to read the graph. Uh, you just need to rely on your algebra. A few properties of the graph I'll point out here. Number one, notice that the graph does not have to start at the origin at zero. It can, it's kind of convenient when it does, but it doesn't have to. What must, must be a part of a graph is you see there are evenly spaced divisions here. Every box here represents the same thing on the vertical axis, 100, 4. On the horizontal axis, each box represents 10 tor. They don't have to equal the same amount on either uh, axis. What they do have to do is be consistent on each axis. So on the x-axis, every box is 10 degrees Celsius and every box on the vertical axis represents 100 tor. Let's go ahead and read this graph like, like this. So what is the vapor pressure of water at 72 degrees Celsius? Well, if we read here on the horizontal axis, we'll see that uh, 72 is between 70 and 80, closer to 70, so right around here. And we're reading the vapor pressure of water, so we read up to the curve that represents water. And then we read all the way across until we get to around here. And this is uh, between 200 and 300, closer to 300, so we might read this as 280 torr. Right here, 280 torr. You said 270 or 290, that's okay too. We're reading this visually, so we do have some uncertainty about this last this number here. We don't really know anything about the next number because it's too hard to divide this space into a hundred little pieces and see uh, see where, where it is that closely. And we can also read off the y-axis. So at what temperature is the vapor pressure of ethyl ether? Uh, 850 torr. We'd read the vertical axis till we get above 800, between 800 and 900. Right between those two would be 850. Then we read across here to the ethyl ether line. And then we read straight down right here. So it's, uh, our temperature will be between 30 and 40, a little closer to 40. So I might call it 38 degrees Celsius or so. If you said 37 or 39, that's okay too. This is a, we're kind of guesstimating on this last digit. We're going to end up calling the last digit where we're guesstimating a little bit the last significant figure when we start on measurements next week. Uh, so notice one thing about reading these graphs is when I write my answer, I don't write just a number. I also write the unit. That's going to be true throughout this class. Units are very important because we're using our numbers to make measurements. And so those measurements don't mean anything without a unit. If you tell me, you know, 25, do you mean 25 inches, 25 miles, 25 feet? Those are very different things, okay? So you have to say what it is you're talking about every time in this class. Okay, so this was reading a graph. What if we want to make our own graph? Well, realistically, you'll often make your own graphs using like Excel in the real world or some spreadsheet program. 
but if you're going to make a graph you should understand the way it works and the way that they are constructed so today you'll be constructing your own on paper make sure you understand uh, the proper construction of a graph later on when we have a graphing assignment I will allow you to use Excel if you want to uh, but for today I want you to write on the piece of paper and, and construct a graph yourself or for this week so the first thing you want to do when you're graphing is if you're if you have a a predetermined space like we do here you want to count how many uh how many of these uh boxes here you have on each axis so i'm going to count the big boxes if i count the big boxes here uh so here i'm counting these boxes i've got one big box here two three four five six seven eight nine and eleven eleven big boxes on the horizontal x-axis and on the vertical y-axis one two two three four five six six big boxes each with five little boxes inside so this tells us how we, we might want to divide up our information now often dividing by eleven uh, dividing our, our numbers up into 11 parts can be very difficult. So often if we have 11 boxes, we would want to use 10 because it's very easy to divide anything into tenths. Uh, but we'll see what our data looks like. It all depends on what our data looks like. So assume you have to plot the following data. If the x-axis is going from 0 0.402 as the lowest value to 1.45 as the highest value, what we want to do is we want to get a kind of range of our data and so what we'll do is we'll take the closest big numbers here like we could round this to like 1.5 here and this to 0 0.4 and see what that range is here so we would want to go just a bit higher than this so we can include this at like 1.5 and maybe a bit smaller than this at 0 0.4 and when for our data here we actually end up with 1.1 which is pretty easy to divide by 11. So that's going to be a good range. If the range wasn't good, we'd want to extend it a little bit, which is what we'll have to do for, with our next data set. So we have 1.1. We're going to divide that into 11 boxes. So if we're dividing here, you need a calculator, that's OK. Uh, you know, it's 1.1 divide by 11 we get 0 0.1 so that's a nice round even number for every box and that's what you want uh, so that you can label them easily if this did not divide by 11 very well we might want to divide into 10 boxes and only use 10 of them uh, that's perfectly okay you don't have to use every box but you want to use most of them next uh, let's say the y-axis is on a range from 22 to 114 in terms of data so 22 being the smallest piece of data 114 being the largest well our range here uh, if i take i could go with like 120 to 20. Uh, if i did that i'd have 100. Uh, i just got the the rough range here 90 92. but even if i had 100 it's not really easy to divide 100 into six pieces but it is easier easy to divide 120. So for this one, maybe I want to start at zero and go up to 120. So that would, on the low end, that would be below my lowest data, but not too far below. And on the high end, it would be above my highest data, but not too far above. So if I go zero to 120 and I divide that by six, let's do that. Oops. Zero, so I, 0 to 120 is a range of 120. And I divide that into six pieces. I get that every box is 20. And so that's a nice round number. And we can use that to, to do our graphing there. So now let's start to label our axes. So we're going to be starting at 0 on the y-axis. And so... Um, <clears throat> I'll get out my pen here and I'll start labeling these. So it's going to be zero for the first box, and every box will be 20. So the next one will be 20. Then the next one will be 20 more. It will be 40. Then the next one will be 60. 60. Then the next one will be 80. 
Next one will be 100. And the last one will be 120. And we want to make sure to label our axes. So this is going to be hard for me to write vertically, but you can write vertically on your page. Uh, this vertical axis, well, we've got no units, so I didn't give you any units. But on the next one, I'll show you how you can label with units. Right now, we're just focusing on the numbers. So we made 20 for each box. Now, notice that for our other range, we're not starting at 0. We're starting at 0 0.4. And then every single box is going to be 0.1. So this would be 0 0.5. I'm not going to label it. You don't have to label every one. This one will be 0 0.6. Especially if it, your numbers get crunched up like mine here. I didn't label this, but this one, so this one here is 0 0.4. That's where we're starting. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. This one will be 0 0.7. The next one will be 0 0.8. 0 0.8 uh, then the next one will be 0 0.9 this one will be 1.0 and this will be 1.1 1.2 uh, and we'll go all the way up here to 1.5 so this is 1.3 and this will be 1.4 and the last one is 1.5 and so notice that when we made our divisions here they did not necessarily have to start at zero Okay, this one started at 0.4, that's okay. But they're nice and even. So every box here is 20, and it's a nice round number. You don't want to be labeling your axes like 20.1237. That's impossible to read that graph that way. You want nice, round, simple numbers. And you don't need to include a bunch of digits afterwards either. Uh, these are indicating that this line, this line is exactly 0.60000. So uh, you, when you plot your data, that's where you'll indicate, um, you know, exactly what it is by putting it, positioning it on the line. Okay. So now let's say we want to plot this data. So yeah, we chose a range that was easily divisible by the number of boxes. So now we're going to plot the data that we had. So here is our data. Uh, now, now I've given it units. This is a weight, this information. I've included uh, more data here, the middle numbers and height. So when we make a data a, a, a table, we want to include certain parts in every single one. So those parts will include a title. You'd have a title. This could be, for example, uh, weight and weight versus height. Oops. Weight versus <laughs> height this is a little ugly, but weight versus height as your title. You're also going to want to label the axes. So uh, here we're going to put the uh, height as the vertical axis. Height. And always include your units in parentheses on your axis. I'll be looking for this in all of your graphs. So put the labeled axes with the units in parentheses. So height like this and weight. And the weight is in pounds here. Now these are units you are familiar with. We'll be talking more about units next time. Uh, and again, we had labeled our axes 0, 20, uh, 40, nice and even, even divisions, 60, 80, 100, 120. And then here it was, uh, on this axis, we started with 0 0.4. And every large box was 0.1. So this would be 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, then 0 0.8, and 0 0.9, and 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 
1.3 and 1.4. Okay, so now that we've got all the pieces, we've got a title up here, we've got a title. We've got our axes labeled with units in parentheses. We've got our axes labeled with the, the, uh, the tick marks. The, the numbers here and we have those numbers in even divisions 20 per box vertically and 0 0.1 per large box horizontally now we can plot our data so here the weight is 0 0.402 pounds that's going to be almost exactly on 0.4 and the height is 22 inches so uh 30 will be halfway between 20 and 40. So it's just going to be barely over the 20 mark. So my first point will be right about there. Okay. Actually, maybe I'll use a different color. Is it orange? Kind of looks red, but okay. So there's my first point. My next point will be 0.743 and 68. I want to notice: is there anything here that says 0.743? Of course not. Our our uh, labels have to be rough numbers that are evenly spaced and easy to read. We get the detail by where the the points are positioned in the graph. So this would be points uh, 0.6. We have 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 is right between. And 0.743 is almost a 0.75. So that would be halfway between 0.6 and 0.8. So right around here, a little short of halfway. So we're going to go up like this. And we're going to read till we get to 68. So 70 would be halfway between 60 and 80. We're going to go a little short of that because it's 68. So our second point will be right about there. Okay, and finally, uh, we're going to plot our last point, which will be 1.45. That's halfway between 1.4 and 1.5, right about, right about here, right by my head, there by the tip of my glasses, and then we'll read that up till we get to 114, which will be higher than 110. 110 is halfway between 100 and 120. Uh, it'll be just right about up here. And now we've plotted our data. And sometimes uh, if you think it's going to be linear, you can include a best fit line. Now data is not always linear, but this looks fairly linear, uh, like it should be linear. So if you draw a rough best fit line, this goes approximately between the center of the points like that. It doesn't necessarily intersect any of the particular points. Not all data is going to be linear, though, uh, but that's, that's what can be done. And Excel and other spreadsheet programs have a function that does this. So that's uh, my tips for you on how to complete the graphing assignment this week. If you get stuck, make sure to come to Office Hours and let me know that you need help or email me. Uh, and make sure to turn this in for the rest of the week. And I hope to see you all at office hours and stuff. And uh, I'll see you on the next video. Have a good one. Okay.